Hello, everyone. Let's look at an example of conservation of energy with a non-conservative force at play. Here we have a snowboarder that slides down a hill inclined at 15 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the snow and the snowboard is 0 0.19. If the snowboarder starts from rest and slides 25 meters down the hill, determine A, the magnitudes of the normal force and friction force on the snowboarder using Newton's laws of motion, the final speed of the snowboarder using conservation of energy, and the thermal energy produced. So in this case, we have the snowboarder heading downhill and covering a delta D equal to 25 meters. We have an incline here, theta equal to 15 degrees, and we're given the coefficient of kinetic friction the mass of the snowboarder, this was our delta D that we've included up here, and we have the theta here. And it also tells us then that the snowboarder starts from rest. So that tells us that our VI is equal to zero, and we want to know the final velocity as part of the problem. Let's then start with our free body diagram. We're going to draw our coordinate system here, we're going to rotate it to match the inclined plane, and so if we've rotated our x-axis up in this direction, that means that we've also rotated our y-axis over in this direction. And that's the only one we're going to need, so I'm going to leave it at that. We've got the force of gravity acting downward here, and we've got a component acting then along the negative x-axis given by, given by Fg cos theta. It's going to be a negative in that direction and we've got a y component acting in this direction. And that's going to be an fg sine theta, also acting in the negative direction. I'll have a normal force that's going to balance out that fg cos theta, so it's acting upward here. That's my normal force. And last but not least, I've got the force of friction here. So this is my non-conservative force. And it's acting in this direction, and I'll just draw it on about that length but we know that it must be less than the fg sine theta if I'm going to have acceleration down the hill. Let's look at our balance of forces then. For part A, I want to use those Newton's laws of motion and my balance of forces to figure out the magnitudes of the normal force and the friction force. For the sum of my y components, then, I've got my normal force and negative fg cos theta, and that's all equal to by Newton's law ma, but in this case, there's no acceleration in that direction. So that's zero. And it tells me then that these two are balancing each other out. So Fn is an Fg cos theta. I can further that to say it's Mg cos theta with a 68 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, and a cos of 15 degrees, giving me an answer of 643 six nine newtons or in other words 6.4 times 10 to the 2 newtons my friction force then is related to that kinetic it's a kinetic friction it's related to the coefficient of kinetic friction and my normal force that leaves me with 120 newtons for the force of friction i needed to use these newton's laws here and and my free body diagram to get those forces i need to know what that frictional force is in order to figure out the work that's being done by that frictional force. So that's where that comes into play. Next, it tells me to find the final speed of the snowboarder using conservation of energy. I want to be able to find the work being done by all of the forces. And I know that the work being done by the normal force is going to be equal to zero because it's perpendicular to the displacement delta d. What about the work being done by gravity? This is going to be Fg delta d cos phi, and I'm going to use a subscript there, phi g. In particular, I've got an fg acting downwards, but I've got a delta d acting in this direction. And I haven't drawn them to scale there, I've only shown their relationship position-wise. And the angle between them, I'm going to call a phi g. And so that angle there is the same as this angle here. This is my phi g because my delta D is acting along the negative x axis. So it's acting in the negative x direction. 
And so phi g is going to be equal to 90 degrees minus 15 using basic trig there. So it's going to be equal to 75 degrees. That means here now I've got mg delta d cos of phi g. But I also want to pause here for a moment to point out a couple of other things. So I want to point out that we have this snowboarder going from a height of hi, or initial height, down to a final height, which we'll define as zero. And you'll see why I'm defining this later when I tie it in with the conservation of energy. But this height then, or this difference in height, hi minus hf, which is I'll call delta h, delta h, is given by delta d sine of 15, because it's across from the angle, or it's opposite the angle, theta 15. And my delta d, I'm calling this distance from here to the bottom. I denoted its direction up above, but its full distance from top to bottom would be 25 meters. And so I want to point out that this delta d cos 75 is equivalent to delta d sine of 15 degrees. In other words, it's equivalent to the change in the height. And so it's also equivalent to the change in the potential energy. I'm going to leave it there and I'll plug in some numbers later. Lastly then, let's look at the work done by friction. This is going to be the force of friction, delta d cos of phi f, as I'll call it. And I'll note that the force of friction is acting this way, while the delta d is acting this way. And so the angle between them that I've called a phi f is going to be equal to 180 degrees, as it always will be. And the cos of 180 degrees is a negative one, and so I have a negative force of friction, negative 1 times the force of friction times a delta d. And again, I'm going to plug in numbers later. The last thing I'll add before we move on to the next page is we're starting out up here at a vi equal to 0. And we're going to make it to some final velocity down here that we don't know. And that's what we're trying to find out in part b by looking at the forces or the work done by the forces, and conservation of energy. I'm keeping this in symbolic form because I want to show you the actual conservation of energy and the way it's working out, but you could easily plug in numbers at an earlier point. Let's look at our work, take our work energy theorem, where we're going to look at the total work, and we know that that gives us our change in kinetic energy. And so we have this conservation of energy where all of the work being done, in this case we have the work due to gravity, and we have that other work, in other words, the work being done by friction in this case. And that is going to give us this change between our final kinetic energy and our initial kinetic energy. And in particular on the last slide I showed that this is, on the last slide I showed that this is my potential energy initial potential energy minus my final potential energy. And I showed that this is my negative force of kinetic friction times a delta d. And I know that my kinetic energies can be expressed as 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mvi squared. And then I want to come back to what I showed on the last side where I said I showed that this was equivalent then to looking at the change in potential energies was the change in height. At this point, I could have substituted in that alternative expression of mg delta d cos phi g. I showed that these are equivalent, and I'm, show, I'm doing it here explicitly using the height because I want to show that law of conservation of energy. I want to show those terms again and how they're coming out. But I had worked out the work due to gravity, and I could have just as well substituted in this expression at this point. So let me show you where I want to take this. I'm showing now that this is my change in potential energies, my work due to friction, and all of that is giving me my change in kinetic energy. So at this point I can rearrange it and I can pull over my initial kinetic energy. I'm going to pull down my initial potential energy 
And on the other side then, I still have my final kinetic energy. I've pulled over my final potential energy. And I'm left with the expression here for the force of friction times a delta D. It's now positive because I've pulled it to the other side. And so you'll recognize that this is my initial mechanical energy, my final mechanical energy, and what? My thermal energy. The thermal energy that's being given or being created, produced by the friction. Because that's part C that you're being asked for. So I wrote it out this way so that you can see it explicitly and where it's coming from. Just as we saw in the law on, or in the lesson on law of conservation of energy. Okay, so now I can start simplifying and pulling out some value, putting in some values. Recall that my initial velocity is zero, and I defined my final height as zero. Just like I do with gravitational potential energy, I made that arbitrarily my height of y equal to zero or h equal to zero. I'm then going to go ahead, this is the value I want to solve for right here, is my final velocity. And so I'm going to bring it on to this side and I'm going to isolate. I've then got 1 half mvf squared is equal to mghi, my initial potential energy, minus my force of friction and my delta d. Okay, let's plug in some values then. And so from the 4,312 joules that came out of storage from gravitational potential energy, I gave up 3,000 joules to friction. And I'm left with then 1,312 joules to go into the actual kinetic energy of the snowboarder. And that means if I go on to then solve for the final velocity, I'm just going to insert it here. I will get a value of 6.2 meters per second. And that's what I needed for part B. I was asked to find the final velocity using conservation of energy, which I've done above. Apologies, as I just noticed that I had switched between using um, FK, force of kinetic friction, to FF for force of friction. And those are equivalent here, so I've just fixed them so that they're all um, FKs, force of kinetic friction. For part C then, the last thing I'm asked for is the thermal energy. And that, as I saw up above, is just that positive Fk delta D, and that was equal to 3,000 joules. So that's what I saw here and here. That was my thermal energy. And also noting that it's the negative of the work of friction. So there you have it. We used the con law of conservation of energy to take our total work, which had a gravitational potential energy, the work due to gravitational potential energy, and then some negative work due to friction. And collectively, that's what gave me my difference or my change in the kinetic energy. We see that coming out then as a velocity of 6.2 meters per second at the bottom of that 25 meter um, slope. And the thermal energy was quite significant there. I lost 3,000 joules to, to um, thermal energy. Or at least I gave up 3,000 joules. So instead of it being used for mechanical energy to build up more speed, I turned it into heat or thermal energy.